having taught public speaking for close to 30 years, I've heard and responded to most of the myths surrounding the subject. But you know what? When you hear weak or bad public speeches, it's often because of a belief in one of these 10 myths. One of the most common myths is that because everyone knows how to talk, public speaking then is easy and it's natural. What many people who believe this myth don't realize is that the requirements for effective, even outstanding speeches go far, far beyond what is required for everyday, normal, natural conversations. If everyone who had to give a public speech depended on his or her natural ability alone and did not fulfill the additional requirements for giving effective speeches, you can bet that there would be considerably more disastrous speeches. A second common myth is that if you're familiar with your topic on which you're going to speak, then you don't have to prepare. The biggest problem with this myth is that most people who give speeches don't have sufficient background and personal experience to give an effective speech. It's variety that holds attention. It's a combination of personal experience, facts, statistics, and opinions. Often, you know, personal experience alone is insufficient, and it can't even become boring. Solid preparation is what relieves the dull and the tedious. A third myth is that organization is an important, or organizing a speech can be left until the final delivery. You know, a strong, clear organizational pattern can help listeners follow your speech. Not only that, it can help speakers as well because it helps you move from a beginning point to an ending point with focus and direction. Because a strong structure looks efficient, it can be a persuasive tool all by itself. To leave organization until the final delivery of the speech is a mistake because at that time there are so many other things that are going to occupy your mind it's hard to think about organization alone. A fourth myth is that speaking from your heart is all that's necessary to sell an idea or to win a following. Persuasion is complex, maybe even difficult. To think that a single speech alone is going to sell listeners on an idea or win them over probably is asking too much. However, it's more likely to work if speakers spend time carefully putting their speeches together with a clear structure, strong, well-supported ideas, and sufficient practice. A fifth myth is that you don't need to be concerned about transitions until you get before your audience. You can just add them when you think they're needed. You need to write out your transitions and get them into your speech beforehand if you want a smooth speech that is both unified and coherent and will be easily followed by listeners. To wait too often is to forget. A sixth myth is that since there is nothing you can do about your nerves, the best way to deal with them is when you start talking. You know, the very best solution to dealing with your nerves, often referred to as stage fright, is solid preparation and practice. When you get before your audience, there are things that can be done, of course, but there is nothing that beats prior preparation and practice. You know, I have never yet heard of a person who has prepared and practiced too much. The seventh myth is that you can deliver your message best if you use no notes and no manuscript. The best and most accepted way to deliver a message is extemporaneously, that is, using few notes. When you memorize a speech, it looks memorized, and you run into all the problems that a failed memory tends to bring on. For example, forgetting, losing your place, having to repeat ideas in order to find your place, or lack of adaptation to your listeners. A manuscript also has problems because speakers will read from it, 
they'll fail to look at their listeners or they will fail to adapt to the ideas of the moment. Using notes sparingly, extemporaneous speaking, has a number of advantages. First, you can look your listeners in the eye. Second, you can adjust your message when you find that listeners are either losing interest or becoming enthusiastic or needing more information. Third, you can refer to your notes when it's important to find a point, a quote, or a statistic. You don't have to depend on your memory. And fourth, it allows the greatest flexibility in ease of use, in comfort at the lectern, and also in movement. An eighth and related myth is that because speaking is natural, you don't have to practice. People don't like to practice because their speeches, when they do it in practice, it seems artificial. It seems like it takes too much time or you have to have the whole speech prepared ahead of time. For effective practice, use your notes just as you're going to use them in the speech. Make adjustments to the ideas and structure as you proceed. Even videotape your speech so you can critique and evaluate it. The more you practice, the more likely an effective outcome will result. The ninth myth is that you don't worry about how to end your speech. You don't have to worry about it because when you get to the end, you just stop. Such an approach oftentimes results in a speech with several endings a longer speech than necessary, or even a lackluster ending that lacks a bite or memorability. What many speakers don't realize is that research has proven that there are two spots strongest in a speech for convincing listeners, and they are the introduction and the conclusion. Both should be carefully prepared. The conclusion offers listeners that final impression. The tenth myth is that you need to thank the audience when you're finished. The thought here is that to be respectful, you need to thank the audience for listening to you. But the reverse is actually the truth. They should thank you for offering them new ideas or a new approach, a new point of view. You are doing them a favor, not the reverse. Knowing that in advance means you need to put the time and effort into making your speech the best you have to give, your very best effort. These myths place the responsibility for preparing and presenting speeches squarely on the shoulders of speakers. They offer a valuable perspective on what makes an outstanding speech, and they make it clear the time and effort necessary to be successful. Success doesn't occur accidentally. It's a result of strong commitment, preparation, and practice by speakers. One way to overcome or counteract these myths is to read about and remind yourself of the essentials of public speaking. The essentials are contained in this 181-page book, Public Speaking Rules, All You Need for a Great Speech. There's no other book like it. It's available now at Amazon.com. You can also find out more about public speaking rules at publicspeakingrules.com.